island of Oahu lies the most notorious seven-mile stretch of surf on Earth, the world-famous North Shore. It is in this mythological place, surfing the biggest waves in the world, that legends are made and lives are lost. Right there, I just started praying to God, you know, I hope I'll be all right. Once a year for two months, it becomes the surfer's mecca of partying all night and surfing all day. Every night, chaos, fights, the whole deal. A tight-knit community living life on the edge, where everything focuses on surfing and the locals make the rules. Oh, well, not sure it's like the wild, wild west. I wouldn't say that we run it, but we definitely police it. This year, seven of the world's top young surfers will live in one house on the infamous Surfer's Row as they chase a half a million dollars in prize money and the glory of the greatest achievement in surfing, the band's triple crown. The friendship ends when you hit the water. It's every man for himself. There'll be rivals in the water and roommates on land, coping with the pressures of competition and everyday life. Three world-class events, seven professional surfers living under one roof. Previously on Boarding House, Damien's Christian values were put to the test when his girlfriend moved into the house. I'm not trying to follow like, the Lord's plan, but he says that no sex before marriage. It's something that we struggle with. Tempers flared when Veronica left Holly and Chelsea behind the day of the Turtle Bay Resort Women's Pro. Come on, Veronica. We need to think about everybody in the group. Holly gets into a paddle battle with another competitor. Oh, Causing her to lose focus and a shot at the triple crown. I should have just left alone and not said anything. A tough loss brings an end to BK's season as well, leaving only Chelsea to compete in the final jewel of the women's competition. And at the men's rip curl cut, Damien, Sunny, and Miles all faced a disappointing defeat. Having won the triple crown, I've never had to face this type of pressure. Tonight, the pressure continued to mount in the quest for the band's triple crown of surfing. Chelsea flies to Maui for the women's competition, while the guys take on the biggest and most dangerous event of the pro surf tour, the Pipeline Masters at the world-famous Bonsai Pipeline. And the stakes are raised as the tension mounts. shoot and the other surfers around you can guarantee that you are gonna get hassled. It's part of surfing. Every everybody likes to do stuff. Feel it Danny, really feel it. Danny Fuller is a bit of a wild kid. He's got a full balls out approach. And he's one of the, the new young guns at Pipeline. You know last year I think he made it to the quarterfinals of the pipe contest. He really showed some skills out there. Right with the camera. The camera loves you. This year they're doing it off of a vote. Young Guns, past champions, Hawaii surfers, international surfers. I'm totally qualified. I should be in the like, no questions asked. So I just have to see what happens. For this year's Pipeline Masters, we've actually just sent out a poll to all the previous contestants. And the input we got back from that, we're utilizing to select who gets in. It allows somebody like Danny Fuller, who does not surf competitively, and a chance to compete in the Pipeline Masters. Um, we're opening the last of the uh, entrants, which just came in, and we'll add those to what, what we've already compiled. So there's probably more politics, I'd say, involved in the contest scene than the 
free surfing scene, which I do. I'm just going to float around. Rocky Cannon, Connie Chapman, Danny Fuller. I, I will be really pissed if I'm not in that contest. Morgan, we got 10. 35 for Fuller. Danny's Bernie Baker. What's up, Bernie? How are you doing? Good. Listen, we just got finished dialing up all the boats. Uh -huh. You are number seven for the Pipe Masters Trials. Wow. So, you know what that means next? It's on. Let's <laughs> it means it's on. It also means that you need to scamper down here and take some kind of entry form for you. Okay, yeah, I'll come down there right now. Congratulations. All right, thanks, man. It's been real. Right. So I'm really actually looking forward. To There's not going to be any doohickey guys in the trials at all. Everyone's going to be getting nuts, no matter how the conditions are, so... This year should be a really good one. You just got to complete your uh, re release form. Yeah. All right. All right. Kind of makes it a little bit more interesting. You got guys coming from all different places. You know, I'm stoked to be in the main event. This is kind of where I, what I'm looking for. So I'm pretty psyched. Hopefully everything goes well. I was listening to Miles, and he was just kind of telling me about like last year when he won the Triple Crown. He just seemed like a really like just determined, just doing what you should be doing. He definitely did party the night before. I was just like, wow, you know. You're focused, man. I was like, I need to get on your program. I've been going to the fitness every, pretty much every day. Yeah, I'm definitely trying to get myself focused for the event. I'm just waiting for the day to come. When the day comes, I'm excited. It's on. For the third and final jewel of the Women's Triple Crown, we move to the west side of Maui, the beautiful Honolulu Bay. There are two girls you really want to keep your eyes on, Samantha Cornish and Chelsea Jorgensen. One of those two girls will come out the Triple Crown Rookie of the Year. Woke up a few times last night just because I was excited, I guess. Um, that's pretty normal. You know, I'm feeling pretty relaxed and focused, so hopefully it'll all start to happen. Welcome to the Billabong Pro Maui at beautiful Honolulu Bay, and the surf is spectacular. This is the third and the final jewel in the women's division of the band's triple crown of surfing, and we have the best of the best. In this heat, we have rookie sensation Australian Chelsea Jordan in white and Hawaiian Megan Abubo in purple. At stake for Chelsea is a shot at the rookie of the year title. The judges' scoring criteria includes size of the wave, style, and difficulty, and the surfer with the best two waves will advance to the quarterfinals. Here we go. Chelsea Jordan out of New South Wales, Australia. The 19-0 redirects the bottom through to the top, and she pops her fins out, and she goes down. Out the back, it's Megan Abubo, the 24-year-old out of Hollywood Beach, and she gets a closeout section, so no real point scored. Out the back now, it is Chelsea Jordan, a spectacular wave, a rail grab, tucks underneath the lip. Oh, is she going for it? It could be a perfect 10. She does not make it out, unfortunately, but she's going to score some points. A valiant effort for Chelsea Jordan. Out the back now, it is Megan Abubo with a nice wave, getting a couple of turns in. It's going to close out section. Abubo back in the scorecard with a solid wave. Here's their second one. Abubo charging hard. And with this wave and these turns, Abubo's going to take the lead. Less than a minute remaining. Chelsea needs a miracle. Look at this wave of the day. Chelsea paddles. Seconds remaining on the clock. She free falls to the bottom. A monster wave. She's caught at the bottom. Tries to tuck underneath the lip and she gets it. No, she appears. She exits that wave and out the back she goes. Chelsea Jordan, a dramatic last minute ride. What an unbelievable gutsy performance. Chelsea Jordan edges out Megan Abubo and advances to the quarterfinals. Off her off though, I was like hooting for you. But like, did I do that? But didn't you get barrel? <laughs> I was just dropping down and then I pulled up around it and then it like closed down on the inside so I dove through the back. It is time to move into the quarterfinals in this first heat in purple, Chelsea Jordan, a rookie who has been stunning the crowds and her competition all year long. She'll be competing against Polly Mincer and White, an Australian and a former world champion who should provide some stiff competition for Chelsea. The winner of this heat will advance into the semifinals and is guaranteed at least a fourth place finish. Here she goes, Chelsea Jordan, her first wave, and it is a beautiful wave. Nice hook turn underneath the lip. Redirects off the bottom, off the top again. Floating re-entry attempt, and she goes down. Could have been a high-scoring wave. Nonetheless, 
she gets in point. Her competitor, the 1993 world champion, Polly Menser, with a traction pass right underneath her feet for performance surfing. Get some solid turns in, and she's going to take the lead. But fighting right back is Chelsea. Chelsea with some beautiful turns, grabs the rail, looking for a cover-up. Chelsea with a solid wave. She is fighting right back. But it's Polly Menser in the barrel one more time, and she claims it. Menser, the 16th year pro, making it look easy here at Honolulu Bay. Menser's in the lead. Chelsea's last chance. Free ball drop on a huge wave. Tries to make the bottom turn. Oh, and gets pounded by the wave. Ladies and gentlemen, Chelsea Jorson with a great performance, but it will not be enough to advance, and Chelsea will have to settle for fifth place, ending her competitive season. However, she still will be a contender for the Rookie of the Year title. Being knocked out in the quarters is a bit of a shame. Like, I would have loved to have made a final or won the event, but um, everyone wants to do that. Only one person can win. Coming up next... The women celebrate Chelsea's return with a surf trip to the west side. And when the partying heats up, can Danny maintain focus for the competition, or will he continue his boyish ways? What are we serving? What are we serving, guys? This girl's always making plans. I never do. Oh, sure we do. They can talk about it all day, about how they're going somewhere. Are you think you're going to do it like... Yeah, that'd be... Six or like seven in the morning. It never happens to like <laughs> one or two. We just like to plan ahead. Uh, where, where are we surfing today? The girls are all going to surf somewhere. It's bigger. You guys are going to surf it? Yeah. Don't even get us started about you boys, though. Yeah. Yeah, right. We said we're going surfing, we're going surfing. Hawaii, there's a lot more things to do. It's, it's a nicer place just to sort of relax and cruise and and um, without having the stress of the contest, it's, it's nice. Yeah, I can't make the decision right now. I'm sorry, I have to take two. We have, I filled up water bottles, guys. Because then they, the boards end up going like this. That's what I was doing, everyone. I don't know how to do it that right. Nobody cares. I do care. Thank you, Veronica. I was just asking if we had water. Should I fill up more? Too late. I got it. I pay attention to details, and Veronica doesn't. That's one thing that frustrates me about Veronica. Veronica! I'm like, this is big hump. And I'm like, one of you is going to have to sit in the back before we get there if you keep carrying on like that. Ah, <laughs> It's smaller than yesterday right now, actually. Well, let's go check um, the house. We're just going to drive along the west side and see what else we see. Is that the bay? It's nice for me to go home and, and visit the west side. When I come down for the most part, I mean, I keep in touch with all my, you know, really close friends. And I, I grew up with Tyson, and, you know, he lived one street over from me at Miley Point. just wanted to be like him, so now that I got my son, he's competing. And um, I tell him, if you want to be good, you just surf every day and, and surf like Sonny. So, so what, are you, are you going to go by your mom's, or? I know, i got to call my mom, because she, was, she wasn't too stoked. <laughs> about some Sports Illustrated um, interview I did and they called her house a hole in the ground. She wasn't impressed. I thought I had a great house. You know, we might have been poor, but we had a, we had a nice house, nice yard, and, you know, rich in love. It's nice for me to go home and the west side, that's where I'm from, and I don't go back that, that much. And I would say about three quarters of my friends are all in jail for doing God knows what. Yeah, I spent my whole life trying to get get away from there. You can get your eyes done, your hair cut, get a plate lunch before you go to jail. The nicest people in the world live there. But then again, the worst people in the world also are there too. This is more or less a poor side of the island. It's the only place a lot of people can afford to live. My job. I don't know if my mom wants anybody to see her house. She's kind of insecure about it. And I mean, if she still doesn't want us to stop by, then, uh, you know, I got to obey my mom. I heard grandma's not home. Huh? She bought me. What about you? Yeah. I'm not it. How about one? One knuckle sandwich. For the most part, yeah, I, I don't go back that, that much. And, you know, I love the people there. And, 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 you don't have to be successful in life to be happy. You know, my family is pretty happy people, and, um, you know, some of the
of the poorest people in the world. Uh, call me later. Yeah. No, you know, it's her boyfriend. We've been going out for four and a half years. Uh, Last year and a half, it's been a little weird because I was sort of over it, but I'm over having a boyfriend, but I love him. I'm stoked the contests are over. <laughs> I'm really glad. It's nice to be able to enjoy myself. Let's just get out and socialize over here. I've done this enough times over the years to know that when there's not really any waves and it's a Saturday, I guess it's all about the adventure anyway. We had fun in the car, so now we're going to go get wet. All right. I'm a cop, so I'll call you right back. I grew up here in Wyandotte, just on the street, so this whole side of the island is pretty much my home, and for me, it's just, you know, this was a natural pick to buy a house just on the street, and every morning I could get up and run down to the beach and surf my car, so, um, you know, it's pretty stoked living down here, it's just unfortunately, the crime rate's a little high in this area, so <laughs> it's still my home, and I love it, and I love the people down here, so it's unfortunate. I rented it out to some family a couple of years ago, and they kind of screwed all my washers and dryers and took out my cabinets and all bunch of stuff. So my sister's been here trying to clean it up. It's been a lot of work. I think I found somebody to come in and help. Never in my wildest dreams. I mean, even when I was starting to do good, I ever thought that I'd be able to afford to buy a house. I, I haven't really talked to anybody about it. And I talk to kids. I always tell them, I mean, anything's possible. And, and not just in surfing. I mean, in any sport or anything that they want to become in life. Even my own dad used to tell me surfers are bombs. I mean, that was his whole thing. Why do you want to be a surfer? You only be a bomb. He set a goal, and as long as you stay in the same path and keep keep pounding away and knocking on the door, eventually the door's going to open. And, you know, you never know what's on the other side of that door. I mean, just keep pounding away. Three weeks ago, they beat somebody to death at Diamond Cup Beach. Actually, I've made it out of there, and uh, I hope that one day that a lot of a lot of my friends and my lot of friends' kids can actually, you know, look and see that you know I made it out of there, and you know, hopefully follow that path and um, you know do it do it themselves. It's just a lucky person, you know, to come from where we came from and to go as far as he did and to have what he has today, and, and I really admire that. So I just, you know, I tell my son, if you want to be like anyone, be like Sonny. Stay in school. <laughs> it depends on what you want in life. You never succeed. You just you just chase chase that dream. And I'm, I'm still chasing it. After two successful events, the last few days the swell was really big. Unfortunately, it's been dropping the last couple of days, and we're down to about four feet, maybe a little bit less. The swell has swung a little bit more out of the northerly direction. It's kind of closing out. It really isn't the kind of conditions that we want for pipeline. This is the Pipe Master Hotline for Tuesday, December 10th. We are on a standby basis. Buoys are showing an increase in swell to arrive later this morning and building throughout the day. We'll make a decision at 9 a.m. for a possible 10 o'clock. Start, please check in after 9 a.m. Stand by. Connor's definitely not on today. I am not stoked. It definitely won't be to my advantage if they have waves this fall. The 12 day waiting period, we can have the luxury of letting it go by, so we'll probably pass on the first day of competition, wait for the swell to come up, and hopefully get back to those famous tubes that Pipeline's known for. Probably turn out to be a good, fun day for everybody to go and have a practice session or two. We're here at the Bonsai Pipeline, and this is probably the most photographed spot in the world. It's one of the hollowest waves in the world. It's one of the gnarliest waves in the world. And 
anybody that knows anything about surf knows knows what the pipeline is. For me, this is home, and you know, it's my favorite favorite spot in the whole world. So it has a really crazy bottom. It's like volcanic reef almost, so like almost like anvils coming out, and like you can really get hurt out there for sure. There's all kinds of risks, but you know that's all part of the fun. What separates Pipeline from uh, most of the other spots here on the North Shore is the intensity of the wave itself. The power is pretty much unmatched just about anywhere in the world. The tube rides and the, the sensation that you get from riding these waves, uh, one good wave out here is as good as 50 waves anywhere else, so it's basically the Indianapolis 500 of surfing. A lot of careers are made and broke right here at Pipeline. It's really, you know, the type of wave that if you're in the wrong position, end your life or your career, you know. Uh, it's a life or death situation out there. Someone dropping in, it's not about, oh, you just took my wave. It's about the consequences of you taking off on me could end my career or my life. Mark is so dumb. Now that guy got cracked last, last winter, too. I'm surprised he's back. Basically, don't drop in, you know. Yeah. Guys' lives are at risk. Ain't no joke. Gotta make examples. Hopefully he learns. I would have after that crack. <laughs> We had a barbecue for them so they could come over and play and got quite a few people over there. We're all surfers and that's our bond that brings us all together. You know, we're all going to remain to be good, good friends because when you spend this amount of time with anyone, you really develop a sense of, you know, closeness. consider myself one one of the more focused guys or I try to be at least. You know, I'm not really too big on parting during the winter time, you know, I really want to concentrate and do well in the events. Pipeline really demands a lot of respect. I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to it. Parties in the North Shore you can really easily just get all caught up in it. It's pretty hard to say no. find yourself just like somewhat in a party life every night. Who said these girls over here? I think you guys you could take a boat. Amy, what do you think? I think it's crazy. Where? Only my friend Mike
safest. surf of the infamous Bonsai Pipeline. Sonny's quest for a sixth triple crown runs into problems, while Miles looks to win his first competition. So, uh, as you can see, it's still pitch dark, but we had that swell come up yesterday, late afternoon, as expected, and it built through last night, actually, some 10-foot uh, sets, and the surf should be a minimum of six foot, occasionally bigger sets, and it'll be a great day to get underway with 32 surfers, predominantly local surfers, some foreign surfers, all pipeline specialists will compete today. So you can start off good, get into the wave, it'll be looking really clean. Towards the end, there'll be a section that could be a little bit treacherous, and uh, we'll see how the surfers handle it. we see in Man Against Nature. Pipeline is known for its tube rides, getting in the barrel, in the tube, out of the tube. If you can get in the tube, master the pipeline to come out, that's what's going to make the difference of who's going to do well at the pipe. My grandma's been coming out to events ever since I can remember, and she's very proud. And um, you know, they like to come out and uh, you know show me some su support and uh, you know be my lifelines. She loved me to death. She took me everywhere. They made me feel very special, and I think that's why I, I am where I am today. Sitting a second for the triple crown, going into the last event. Uh, never know. This this year might be my year. As we start the Pipeline Masters, the race for the Triple Crown is super close. Sonny Garcia took out the first event at Hollyiva. He's got to do well here at Pipeline if he's going to try to get that sixth Triple Crown title. He's won it five times before. He knows what to do. It's going to be a matter of luck. We'll see how he does. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Aokai Beach Park and the Bonsai Pipeline. It's our first day of elimination rounds for the third jewel of the band's Triple Crown of Surfing, the world-famous Jerry Lopez Xbox Pipeline Masters. In today's first heat, we have local legend Sonny Garcia in yellow, Mick Lowe in red, Victor Rebos in white, and Guillermo Hurdy in blue. No surprise here, it's Sonny Garcia. First wave takes command of the situation. And unfortunately, this wave closes out in front of him. First wave, but not much else. Not a lot of points on that. Here comes Mick Lowe, the Australian, the goofy footer. Drops in late, hands up, perfect barrel, and gets blown out of it. That is pipeline at its best. How is that? Garcia with a funky opening wave, and then Mick Lowe, a perfect wave. Garcia fighting back. It's back door for Garcia. Take a look. Totally slotted in the barrel. Will he come out? No way! He gets owned it! And now he's going to get it on the head by another wave! The heat is half over, and if Garcia wants to challenge our leader, Mick Lowe, he's going to have to make his move quickly. Don't give up on Sonny Boy Garcia. Here comes veteran Victor Rebos. Drops in, nice barrel. Makes it out, going for a second barrel. Looks good, but he gets taken out. The ride was still strong enough to leap him into second place, pushing Garcia all the way to last place. Garcia now needs two big rides if he hopes to make it into the next round. Feeling the pressure, here's Sonny Garcia on the next wave. Garcia looking for a huge barrel. And unfortunately, this is not the wave he's looking for. Not enough to get Sonny out of fourth place. It's Garcia and Rebos. Rebos backs off. Garcia drops in. It takes shape, stands up over the reef. Where's Garcia? Yeah! And he exits out of the pit. Garcia, this might be the way he needed to get back in contention. What a way from Garcia, the commitment. He was blinded, totally engulfed by the white water. He fought his way out of the wave, once again showing why he is the master. The judges reward Sonny well, and he moves into third place, but he still needs a big wave to advance to the next round. His quest for his sixth triple crown could end here in the first round of Pipeline. The closing seconds of the heat. Garcia sees one more wave. It's a backdoor pipe wave. Late takeoff drops in, makes the bottom turn, and he's covered up. Garcia. Oh, he comes out of the wave. Garcia pulls it off. I love watching this one. It's big. 
an absolutely amazing performance. Pressure means nothing to this guy. He just keeps stepping up out there. The scores are in, and Sonny Garcia standing in the lion's mouth avoids a first-round elimination with his last ride. What a stunning turn of events as Sonny Garcia comes back from the brink of elimination to keep his quest for a sixth triple crown alive. I got up this morning getting really excited, and you know, I've just been taking whatever I could get. It's all about how bad you want it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. For me, it's the last event, and uh, yeah, I need to do well. We'll see what happens. We'll start it all off and hopefully set the pace. This should be an exciting day for a contest. Just got to go out there and try to be in rhythm with the ocean because that's a lot of it right there is just catching two good waves and the dancing to the final. What I remember of my dad is clinging tight with the death grip to the nose of his surfboard. He was behind me and we're going over these huge waves and I mean, I was scared, I was frightened, but it was exhilarating at the same time. My dad was, um, he was one of the best out of pipeline right here. And, you know, a lot of people tell me, yeah, your dad is a legend at pipe, you know, he rode with the best of them. Having my dad pass away was one of the most heaviest things that I've ever gone through in my life. You know, being there when he passed away, it was like, it's really changed me. Um, we cremated him and we spread his ashes out of pipe. I think that every time I go into the ocean there, it's kind of like, I know that he's there, you know, I feel his presence. When I go out there, I feel like, you know, I'm visiting him. I know he's, he's looking down on me right now with a big fat smile on his face and he's just, he's just clamming, he's going, yeah, my kid did it, you know, he won the triple crown. One of the main things that I wanted to do is put a family name on the map. I really wanted to nail something down for the family, just leave a great legacy for the future generations to come. I love competition, don't get me wrong, but for me, serving is really, is, is really a soulful thing. I've always been a soul surfer, I think, at heart. Second day of competition here at the Pipeline. The very first heat features our defending Triple Crown champion, Miles Padaka. Unfortunately, he's out of the running for the Triple Crown title, but he does have a chance for the Pipe Master title, but that it's no small feat at a place like this. Miles learned to surf here on the North Shore when his dad brought him to Pipeline. He'd love a win here, but as I said, it's going to be a tall order to try to take out that title. Here in yellow, competition really doesn't determine who's the best surfer because it's so hard to go out there and do what you got to do and that given amount of time that everything has to fall into place. Welcome everyone to the second day of the elimination rounds for the third and final jewel in the band's triple crown. The world famous Jerry Lopez Xbox Pipeline Masters. We saw some great surfing yesterday and that looks to continue. And in this first heat of the day, we have the defending triple crown champion Miles Padaka in yellow, Rocky Cannon in red, Rizal Tanjung in white, and Kamali Alexander in blue. The thing about competition is you go into it, and you're feeling good, you got the right boards and everything, and you just kind of want to kind of want to let it just happen. And sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. You're thrown out there for 20 to 30 minutes in the heat and you know either the waves come to you or they don't. Here's Miles Padaka, his opening wave, drags his hand, slots himself perfectly in the barrel. The cover up at the exit. Great ride. Defending Triple Crown champion Miles Padaka wants to win his first Pipeline Masters. Well, he knows how to surf under pressure, and he knows he has tough competition like Rocky Cannon. Charging onto the next wave, squares off a bottom turn. Perfect positioning, there's the barrel. Cannon really setting the bar for this heat. If Miles wants to win, he's going to have to step up or risk elimination in this first round. Here's our Indonesian server, Rizal Tanjung. Drops in, close out section. Ooh, he gets crushed. Here's Miles Padaka. His last chance, time winding down. Goes back door. Slots perfect.
perfectly, there's the cover-up, and he escapes from the closeout section. Now, with that wave, enough points to advance Miles. And look, Miles looks like he's going to paddle back out. Miles doesn't realize this is the end of the heat. Here comes Miles riding in on the white water, and he looks confused and really upset. Information I got from upstairs. 30 minutes. 35. Once again, heats on 25 minutes. Best two wave scouting. Beach Marshall took all of us to this 30 minute heats, and then they make it 25 minutes while we're out there. That's just a bunch of crap. I mean, you don't tell all the competitors in the heat that they're one thing and change it while they're out there. Okay, over here, you guys have 30 on my list. So the guys are, you know. Boarding House North Shore will continue in just a moment. Well, they said there were 30 minutes, but they were actually 25 minutes, and then they changed them. What? How do you 30 minutes? In the very next heat, we have local surfer Danny Fuller. Now, Danny is what's known as a pipeline specialist. He doesn't compete on a tour. He doesn't go around the world in the pro events. But here on the North Shore, he's known for his charging of the pipeline. He's not really a good competitive surfer, but if he can score the waves of pipeline, we could see some big results from this kid. And as a young surfer, this is the kind of dream he hopes to do. My mom's here. I'm in the Pipe Masters. I figured, like, put on a show for her, you know? Cause that's what got me really psyched, you know, just be, like, chilling with my mom on the beach right for my heat. And my sister didn't make it last year, so, yeah, I'm stoked she's here. I find myself just thinking way too hard, and you just, like, just can't even pull it together and just have a complete shocker and freak out. <laughs> Definitely possible to psych yourself out, for sure. Here we go with the next elimination round for the Jerry Lopez Xbox Pipeline Masters. In this heat, we have local surfer Danny Fuller, and he will be surfing against Poncho Sullivan in red, Mark Healy in white, and Rob Machado in yellow. Rob has won the Pipeline Masters in 2000, but any one of these guys is a serious contender to win the whole competition. With this group of surfers out there, we should see some great performances. Okay, Danny, take it on. Danny Fuller draws first blood, launches into a pipe barrel, but it closes out. He pulls out the back door. Here goes Rob Machado now in yellow. Rob, perfect timing, perfect positioning, classic pipeline surfing. And Rob makes the most of that wave with a lot of style and grace. Now, where did all the waves go? What started out as stellar waves has quickly gone flat. This has to be tough on our surfers, especially after seeing Machado post a beautiful ride on his last wave. Very uncharacteristic of Pipeline, all of a sudden going flat. Now the surfer's wondering what's going on. A serious lull on the waves. The time for waiting is over. The surfers are beginning to paddle. They see something. And in position, it's Rob Machado. Machado drops in, the goofy footer. The style master. Makes the most of that wave. Here comes Poncho Sullivan. Sullivan, rail grab. Gets covered up, pulls out. Nice move. Look at that gouging cutback to end that wave. Poncho Sullivan making the most of it. Is it Fuller? No, it's Mark Healy on a huge closeout. Here comes Machado again. All sorts of speed. There's the cover-up. Brilliant surfing. Taking everybody to school. Where's Danny Fuller? We haven't seen anything from him since the first wave of the heat. I would hate to think that the pressure has gotten to this promising young surfer, but so far he hasn't shown us much. 
It's Fuller grabbing a wave, trying to stay in contention. But he's unable to make it out of the wave, and the wave crashes down on him. I don't know if it's nerves or what, but he is not delivered. Danny Fuller in position for the next wave. Oh, and he pulls back. He really seems to be psyched out. Whether it's the waves or the competition, Danny is surfing very tentatively, and he passes up another chance to score points. Fuller sees something on the outside. Take a look at this monster wave. Danny Fuller, it's now or never. So much for being tentative. He charges a monster wave. Goes for the double cover-up. He exits. Oh, my gosh. How was that? What an amazing ride for Danny Fuller. For the most critical wave of the heat for himself, and he dominated the wave. It went from bad to worse to epic. The Fuller kid rocks. I can hear the magic markers right now. Tens across the board. The judges give Danny Fuller a perfect ten. What an achievement for this young rider, truly cementing himself as someone to keep an eye on in the future. But it still might not be enough to get him into the next round. And what a disappointment that would be. The ocean now has gone flat again. And that's how we'll end this season. And the results are in. For this heat, it's Mr. Perfect Ken Danny Fuller and Rob Machado advancing to the next round. These guys will be going head-to-head -to -head tomorrow, and you can only imagine what kind of surfing we'll see then. Now let's go down to Bo, who's with Danny. Hello, Danny. Congratulations. I don't know if you know, but the Perfect Ken on that tube ride. Tell everybody at the beach what was going through your mind, especially when you're coming out of that wave. Um, I was kind of... I was surprised that wave didn't really look so good at first and just need something to back it up. I didn't have the waves to start. Well, I got a little barrel at first and then kind of came out and went super high and then the thing bottomed out, I dropped down into it and I was sitting out there thinking I lost and then got that wave. I was stoked. Yeah, you got the right of speed. If you did that, I would go down like a chicken chair and to Boarding House North Shore. The men continue the battle in the notoriously massive waves at the Bonsai Pipeline. Danny Bold surfing will require a repeat performance when he surfs against defending Triple Crown champion and roommate Miles, while Damien is ripping it up at Pipeline. Sonny's temper is put to the ultimate test when rival Jake the Snake threatens Sonny's shot at his thick Triple Crown. And the house is in shock when Holly goes on the prowl. I need to get some abs. Who's your pick of the crowd? Tonight's Boarding House North Shore featured music by Red West. <laughs>